Good morning, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to present here. I would also like to clarify, I'm a second year medical student at the Medical College of Wisconsin, and my project is called The Impact of Nausea on Post-Operative Outcomes in Bariatric Surgery Patients. We do not have any significant disclosures relevant to the information that um, I'll be presenting in this study. Okay, so the most common complication after bariatric surgery is dehydration, and this is most commonly caused by post-operative nausea and vomiting, or PONV. PONV can have a significant impact on quality outcomes for bariatric surgery patients, and over the years we've observed and anecdotally noted that this can lead to um, significant quality outcomes for bariatric surgery patients, including um, going back to the clinic for fluids, a greater length of stay at the hospital, or sometimes being even um, readmitted to the facility within 30 days of surgery. Despite an awareness of all of this, when we look at the literature to find evidence to support these findings, we've learned that there's not a lot of work out there in regard to this topic, and so that is what inspired us to pursue our study, which was to determine the impact of PONV on post-operative quality outcomes in the bariatric surgery patient population at Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin. This was a retrospective chart review of adult patients who underwent a primary laparoscopic Roux-en-Y gastric bypass or a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy between 2014 and 2017. For every patient, we determined whether they experienced significant nausea, and that is something that we defined as patients who had nausea documented by multiple providers and which also interfered with their oral intake. We also looked at patients' demographic variables, uh, comorbidities, and the quality outcomes that we analyzed included things such as length of stay, readmissions within 30 days of surgery, and reoperations within 30 days as well. We had a total of 449 primary bariatric surgery patients in our study, and over half of them underwent a sleeve. The majority of our patients were females, and 35.6% of the patients in our study experienced significant PONV. These are some of our demographic results, and a couple of the variables that I would like to point out include race, where we found that non-white patients had a statistically significant increased incidence of nausea, and in regard to procedure type, we found that patients who underwent a sleeve had an incidence of nausea of 66% compared to those who underwent a bypass whose incidence was 33%. These are our post-operative quality outcomes, and we found that patients with nausea had a greater length of stay by almost one full day. They were also more likely to visit the emergency department within 30 days of surgery, and they were also more likely to undergo an endoscopic intervention for reasons such as dysphagia, hematemesis, um, or malnutrition. This is our current anti-medic protocol. In pre-op, everyone gets a tap block in order to minimize the usage of narcotics. Um, additionally, everyone gets a scopolamine patch. And because EMEND is such an expensive drug, this is only given to patients that are screened for and have a a uh, significant history of anesthesia-related PONV. Once in the OR, everyone gets a single dose of IV decadron per anesthesia, and the post-op drugs that we use are Reglan, Zofran, and Compazine, and these are given to um, patients on a PRN basis. This is another view of our anti-emetic pathway, and a common theme here is that uh, most of our post-operative drugs are given to patients on an as-needed basis rather than being scheduled. So we actually think that this would be a great first step as a quality intervention in order to minimize the incidence of nausea by scheduling these drugs to maximize our prophylaxis instead of giving these drugs as rescue medication once patients start to experience symptoms. Another idea for a future quality initiative is to provide further education to patients based on risk factors. So since, for example, we found that 
patients undergoing a sleeve are more likely to experience nausea. We plan to better inform them um, so that they have a better idea of what they can potentially expect in the recovery process and minimize surprises. Additionally, um, we are experimenting with preoperative carbohydrate loading. Um, we found an interesting study at a single institution that utilized a um, enhanced recovery protocol for their bariatric patients and administered a high carb drink the night before and a couple of hours before surgery. And they found that this actually resulted in a decreased usage of perioperative opioids, um, a decrease in the incidence of nausea, and then also a decrease in the number of patients that came to the emergency department within 30 days of the procedure. So patients at our institution currently undergo a high protein liquid diet for two weeks before their operative date. And we believe that since this puts their bodies in a fasting state and depletes their glycogen stores, um, carbohydrate loading they, them might actually uh, improve their nutritional status and then therefore lead to uh, quality outcomes or an improvement in quality outcomes for our patients. So we're currently enrolling patients in a similar study at our institution, and we look forward to seeing the results in a few months. One of the limitations of this project was that there was a lack of a standardized nausea scale scoring system like there is for pain. And so this made it very challenging to objectively measure nausea, which is a very subjective experience for patients. And so we had to rely on the physician and nurse's documentation to really get an understanding of what the patient went through in regard to the nausea and vomiting in the recovery process. And even though we tried to utilize a very strict definition of nausea, we are hoping to experiment with a uh, four-question validated survey um, on each post-operative day to better quantify nausea and better determine what clinically significant nausea looks like for patients. Additionally, this study was conducted at a single institution, and that limits the generalizability of our results. So in conclusion, we found that PONV was more likely in patients who underwent a sleeve. Additionally, patients with nausea had an increased length of stay. They were more likely to undergo an upper endoscopy and also um, present to the emergency department. And for us, these results really highlighted the need for a metric to more accurately measure PONV, as well as the need for some sort of standardized anti-medic treatment protocol to improve our quality outcomes for bariatric patients, not just at Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin, but hopefully at other institutions as well. Thank you.